Good morning. My name is Dennis Lavasser. I'm a captain with Magnolia Fire Department Technical Rescue Team. We're here at uh, Appleton, Wisconsin doing a final walkthrough on our rescue truck. Magnolia is uh, just north of uh, Houston, a suburb, and uh, with all the growth we decided to, to get a, a rescue truck and, a, and build a rescue team. So uh, come take a look at our truck. We went with the Velocity uh, cab and the TAC4 suspension. Inside the truck, uh, we have the vinyl seating. It's for uh, easy cleaning. It's not a clean cab concept, but it's, it's uh, easier to clean with whenever uh, we, we make all fire, working fires. So this real rescue truck was built on a multi-discipline technical rescue concept. Um, we're such a rural area. Uh, we have long transports. It's 182 square miles in Magnolia. So because of the territory and the long runs that, uh, and the possible long times that we're going to be on scene, we built the inside so we can have a command van. We have a table here. Uh, there's a, there's a, at the bottom here, we have where we can set a boat seat there. We went with the boat seat so we could take it in and out, um, more mobile, but we can use it for a semi-command center if we're on scene for extended periods of time. We've got the uh, SCBA that can fit in the back seats for comfort for the firefighters in the back. We've got two computer screens up top that we can get on scene and we can look things up if we have a trench and hazmat or just different things that we might need to, to look up on a computer. We have the dual modules up there. Okay, so we do have an RVAC that, that we added and it's all also hooked up to a diesel generator. So if we're on scene, extended period of times, it runs off the generator and or we can run the extra AC uh, as we're going down the road, a PTL driven um, generator. So that's extra that we had decided to put on just because extended periods of time that we're in the hot Texas sun. This uh, next compartment is uh, just behind the seats where the firefighters sit. This compartment was uh, is going to be used for the engine or operator to keep his gear. Um, we carry firefighter gear and USAR gear for any type of uh, technical rescue and ext extrications. So this allows him to carry all his gear right behind uh, the cab so that he can get out and get dressed if he needs to. This first compartment is one of my favorite compartments that we built. We built these four slide out trays. Um, we, we did use, uh, we did steal this idea from uh, some other technical rescue teams. These are all designed to have all of our Paratech equipment. So we'll have three different um, Paratech kits on these. We'll have a, uh, a shoring kit, a basic 12 shoring kit. We'll have a vehicle stabilization kit, a heavy vehicle, and then we'll have a, uh, uh, a Paratech uh, Absolute 8 Raker set that'll go on in the other one. And then we have the four slide we can put all our hand tools on and it's just easy access, slide them out, get to the equipment and uh, go to work. The bottom here is for extra equipment, the extra boxes that will have the Paratech, Paratech feed in as well. It's just a big work truck. We have uh, capability of running air. Um, 300 feet if we need to, and just plenty of extra shelves for all our boxes. of uh, um, We have Milwaukee tools, uh, breakers, just lots of room for all of our, our boxed equipment that's going to stay in boxes. Here we have these transverse trays. We'll have our Stokes basket, all our rope, hardware, rope bags, equipment that'll go on there. We can easy access from either, either side. If we make a rope uh, technical rescue, high angle, confined space, we'll have all our rope equipment on these. These smaller doors, we can carry SCBA bottle or if we can carry water cans or uh, other extinguishers. Lots of room for those things. Again, being a multi-discipline, we decided that we want to go ahead and uh, carry some trench equipment on this truck. So this compartment here is designed for fin form and ground pads. We'll carry at least four fin form and some ground pads in this uh, compartment. Uh, it's got this uh, chafing material here to keep it from scratching. 
an easy uh, out. And then uh, this is a pretty neat design. I have these little doors so it doesn't slide up against the roll-ups uh, as we're going down the road. So pretty neat design that they come up with to keep those uh, plywood, fin form and plywood from sliding up against the door. Again, extra space on top that we'll keep all our confined space hoses. Um, uh, some of our SAR hoses and our confined space uh, communications equipment. We do have a space saver. Um, we do have a, a cascade. It doesn't have a compressor, so we have four bottles that uh, we hold there. We have the capability of, of hooking this straight into a confined space box or uh, filling bottles on scene. Uh, this is where we're going to carry our SAR cart and uh, most of our trench uh, SAR equipment. Okay, so we're coming around to the right uh, side of the truck. We designed, we tried to design these compartments to, uh, uh, per discipline, so it's easy to remember for that matter. And, um, and then all the, all the, the equipment and gear is uh, together. So this is kind of like our extrication compartment. We have airbag space with our ground pads. Um, we have some space that comes through underneath the uh, stairwell that we'll show here shortly that we can put some uh, ground ladders or uh, little step ladders in there. Also, we can have this space here for our maxi force that we're gonna be getting. And then in here is access to uh, the air bottles uh, for the cascade system. Down here is a, uh, a tray that we pull out. This is typically where we keep our, our saws in this compartment here. The next compartment is the transverse. It's the other side where we're gonna keep our fin form and our plywood. Uh, most of our trench and confined space equipment will go in this compartment. Coming back around, we also have the same little compartments where we can keep the SCBA and or extinguishers, whatever we decide to put in here. Same thing, transverse trays. All of our rope rescue stuff will go in here, hardware and, and rope. That compartment will be for high angle. Next to the confined space. This compartment, we decided that we wanted to go with some more of these pullouts, and we're going to put our uh, extrication, our, we're, we're going with battery tools here. We're going to hang them. Uh, we use a Hamatro in our department right now, so we'll put our Hamatro tools hanging from these two compartments. And then we have these other compartments right here for uh, other extrication equipment that we might have, um, step chocks, things like that. So this will kind of be uh, the other part of our extrication that we'll have here. We have this uh, air compressor, PTO air compressor, uh, that we brought so that we can run our air tools. It's a 300 foot reel that we can use off the truck to run any of the uh, air tools that we'll be running, breakers, uh, breaching equipment. So that was a pretty cool feature that we got to get on this truck is a, a PTO driven air compressor. The next compartment is the other side of our slide house where all of our paratech will go. So either side we can get to the paratech uh, and or the trench equipment. And then coming back around, this is a compartment. This is kind of like the EO's compartment on the other side. Um, like I said before, we carry uh, fire gear and USAR gear. So if we're on a technical rescue, we're not using fire gear or extrication. So I could put my gear here and then uh, carry my fire gear up and or vice versa. I can put the fire gear back here and, and utilize the uh, USAR gear up front. And then we come back around to the uh, rear cab again. Uh, this little compartment here, it's plexiglass, but it shows this is where the CP units will go. We can kind of see through it and see inside. And again, we have the two monitors up top so that we can do some command stuff. And the officer seat, again, vinyl seating, easy clean, SCBA is the back of the seat. We do have the uh, Firecom intercom system. Uh, we're able to unplug them, and then we've walked a couple of hundred feet away from this apparatus and still had good, clear communications with each other. So that's good for if you have to um, back the apparatus up and you have somebody back in the apparatus, you can be on comms. Uh, throughout the uh, the truck and not be on a radio, a dedicated channel. So it allows you to be able to talk on uh, amongst yourselves without having to get a radio channel and, and so forth. It's a, it's a safety thing. The other cool thing about those radio comm, the fire comm, is that we can, uh, if you are on a technical rescue and you have 
uh, guys going back and forth to the truck, you're able to keep talking to them uh, and not have to get on that radio and uh, tie up radio traffic. So that's a pretty cool system, and I do recommend that uh, if, you, if you're thinking going that way. Other than that, we can go up top and show you the coffin boxes up top. All right, so this is a uh, fold down step. It does alarm inside the cab if it's down before you move the truck. So that's a pretty cool feature. Uh, you won't rip it off if you get in, in route with it down. Uh, also, of course, we have our hitch here. We can use the hitch as well as the sides. We'll come back to the sides, but we have hitches that you could use for a portable winch and or we have a monopod, Paratech monopod that we can set up for a high angle or a high point anchor. Uh, so we have that capability and we have a plug-in over here for using the winch as well, the portable winch from the rear. So we're gonna go check out the uh, coffin boxes up top. This is a unique feature about this truck is um, we, they built a, a compartment to have our wood shoring equipment. So whenever we throw Paratech shores and then we need to, uh, we figure out that we're gonna need a long-term shoring we can convert the Paratech into wood. So this compartment here was designed to put all of our four by four wood shoring in it. And um, so as you come up, we'll open it up and you can see. So this right here is like a subfloor for wood. Okay, so this is the subfloor that I was talking about. This is where we can keep some of our wood shoring four by fours. Um, at any length basically because it goes from the uh, from the front to the rear behind the cab so this will be a good spot for our wood shoring that way it gets protected and covered it does have a little subfloor that uh, is removable so that if you wanted to clean it out you can pull those out and clean up underneath them so moving from the rear of the truck to the floor of the truck we have these what we call coffin boxes it's basically extra space that we can put all of our uh, extra rescue equipment We'll have uh, petrogen torches with a, a box of it. We'll have other um, boxes with equipment in it, some hazmat stuff that we use, Tyvek suits for, for a confined space. We'll also be able to use, uh, utilize it for uh, the, our Arizona Vortec equipment. Um, some of our, uh, we'll carry extra cribbing up here. So if we get an extended event or a large event, we can use extra cribbing. Uh, in these compartments. Just a lots of space that we can utilize for pretty much whatever we need, uh, need to. It did come with a little crane that we can use. This is the generator here. So whenever, if we need to remove the generator, it's the diesel 22 kW generator. And then we have the crane here and two spots on each side of the truck where we can put the crane and utilize it for, uh, to get the generator out. And of course, there's the uh, RV AC that we can run down the road uh, with the generator. All right, so uh, we designed this truck with the, uh, these anchor points on the side or more towards the middle of the truck. And the reason why we did that is so that we can, just below that we have a, um, sockets to put a monopod, a Paratech monopod. And these are gonna be our tie back points so that we can tie back a monopod and use it for a high angle, maybe off the side of a bridge or, or whatever if we need to. Uh, if we can't, we don't have access for a tripod, we can use a monopod off the side of the truck and have the top tie backs. That's why we chose to bring them inside instead of on the corners of the truck. So another cool feature that we designed on this truck is uh, receiver hitches on each side of the truck and as well as on the rear. Um, we have the receiver and we have power so that we can use a portable winch on the sides of the truck or the rear and or we can use this uh, to put a monopod and that's why we chose to put those anchor points up top right right here above it and not on the corners so that we can use those as tie backs. We can come off this with a high point Paratech monopod and or we can come off the side of this with a portable winch, which you may have to do if you can't go straight forward with our 15,000 pound winch on front. This is gonna be a 10,000 pound uh, winch on the side. So we have power right here. And then to get to the pin, it's right up underneath the fender well right here. There's a little little trap door, spring loaded door, and you can reach in and you can unpin and pin the receiver here. So on the front bumper, we have a 15,000 pound winch that we can utilize. Uh, that's extra besides the portable winch that we'll have. So we'll have plenty of winching power on this truck. Along with the winch, we have anchor points, multiple anchor points here and on the bottom. So we have multiple anchor points around the we're going to utilize this truck for technical rescue, so we thought rescue. We thought maybe we'd have a lot of anchor points on it as well.
So there it is. It's our beautiful new rescue truck with Magnolia Fire Department. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, feel free to steal any of the ideas that you might like. Thank you.